I don't know if anyone here can relate to this, but I have spent years wanting to work with something without actually taking any action to do so. I had talked about it, I had thought about it, I had dreamed about it, I had looked into it, and then I had talked about it some more. <laughs> but I hadn't done it. I honestly hadn't even tried. So this talk is about doing the thing, which in my instance was learning iOS development to become a native app developer. Developer. And for anyone, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so for anyone who now is like, native developer what? Native apps are applications developed specifically for the platform they run on. For example, many companies will develop one specific app for Apple and another one for Android. Some of these exam uh, some examples of native apps are Rutel and Arcade TV and Finn. I'm also going to use the term iOS quite a lot. This refers to Apple's products like the iPhone or the iPad. But before we get any further into the talk, hi, my name is Egwene. I have a master's for not four, in informatics for, from the University of Oslo. I worked three years as a front-end consultant, and for the past year, I've worked at NRK TV as an iOS developer. So going from saying that I hadn't even tried to do iOS development to saying that I now work professionally at NRK, of all places, <laughs> as an iOS developer, uh, something obviously happened in between there. So like you see, the talk is named Only Doing the Thing is Doing the Thing. And that is the central part of my journey. The only way to become an iOS developer was to do iOS developer things. And that makes sense, right? I mean, not just talk about it, but actually do things like learning the language, the frameworks, the tools like Xcode and simulators on your Mac. So how do we go from thinking and talking about something we want to do to actually doing it? The rest of the talk will focus on the four steps. They are already up that I found helpful when deciding that I w had waited long enough to start. While this talk will focus on my road to iOS hood, these four steps can be applied to pretty much anything, from how to set up an online shop, to creating your own backend, to getting to know Figma, even producing a talk in less than two weeks. So let's get into this with the first step. Identify what you want to do. So the first step is pretty obvious, right? Identify what you want to do. You probably already know this. But just because something is obvious doesn't mean that it is straightforward. So I have three questions that I go through to like kind of help me and probably like maybe help you guys identify the what and the why. So question one, what is holding you back from pursuing this? In other words, why are you postponing doing the thing? Why did I just talk and think about iOS development for years? And to be completely honest with you, I was really scared. I was scared that I would try and that I would not be good enough. And I was scared that I would fail. And I was so scared that it felt reasonable to just not try at all. Uh, because, you know, you can't fail if you don't try. But you can't succeed either. Uh, so I get real with this. Like, there is usually a reason why we don't do the things we would like to do. And figuring out why that is can make it easier to at least try. Question two, what is your goal for doing this? And I'm not saying that you need a goal to start doing the thing. You definitely don't. But it can be easier to stick with the process and to know when you've accomplished what you set out to do. And the goal doesn't have to be grand or sparkling. It can be really, really simple. When I was thinking about this before starting my iOS journey a few years ago, my goal was to get a small win every day. This win. I could get through showing up. And like I said for question one, I was really scared of failing. But if I could get a win from just showing up every day, it felt a little bit less scary. And related to figuring out your goal, it can also be really easy to, be, to become the type of developer your first job needed. I don't know if anyone else here can relate to this. But it also can also then be really hard to break free, especially if you work as a consultant like I did, because they make money from you doing the one thing that you now know how to do. Uh, so another but unspoken goal of mine was to get to work as an iOS developer. And this definitely felt like a grand and sparkling goal, kind of impossible at times. Question three, what do you already know? Because you can build on the knowledge you already have to 
either build up, like figure out the steps you want to take, or to figure out which steps you don't want to take. So, because in essence, what I wanted to do was make apps for iPhone. And you don't need to do uh, native iOS development to make apps for iPhone. You can use a cross-platform framework like React Native. The pros are you'll get an app that runs on both Android and iPhone. And at least for me, I knew JavaScript from university. So it was kind of like, oh, I already kind of know it. Plus, I had worked with it for a year already. So going the React Native route to make iPhone apps should have been the, you know, the, ch the right choice for me. But for some reason, I was still thinking about the mysterious world of native iOS development. And I was really like hooked in their ecosystem already. So why not just you know, connect my job to it as well? <laughs> That's step one done. After having identified what you want to do, why, and what has been holding you back, you're ready for step two, finding resources. With the internet, this should be the easiest thing to do. Uh, however, I find that it gives me a massive functional freeze due to all the choices. A quick Google search of Learn iOS Development shows several different courses and resources. And the same search on YouTube gets a whole list of different creators telling you different ways to start in different ways. And it's just too much information that the hard part often ends up being choosing the resource and not actually finding one. So my best tip here is go back to basics. Talk to the people who are already doing what you want to do. Ask them how they would go about learning what they do now and figure out their resources where they go looking for answers and inspiration. And if you don't know anyone who is doing what you want to do, this is a great opportunity to network. Do this either on LinkedIn or even better here at Otacon. There are so many interesting talks today. I'm sure several of you could find something that you would love to try yourself. Like I now really want to try migra like migrations. <laughs> I, I never thought about it before. <laughs> Don't do. <laughs> um, so yeah, you'd probably, like most people love talking about what they've learned and you'd probably be surprised by how helpful they can be. But depending on how you like to learn, it could be beneficial to look for structured courses, either online or in person. Courses generally have a set progression and a timeline, which for me is how I prefer to learn. However, the most important part is not what resource you choose, but that you choose one and that you commit to it. You can easily spend days, weeks, even months jumping between resources, but that will not get you any further. I would recommend not spending more than a day or maybe an evening looking for a resource to use and go with what you think is best at the end of that time. Ultimately, all resources will teach you something, but it is the effort you put in that will make you learn, not which resource you choose. The same thing also goes if you prefer side projects to courses. If the goal is learning, then focus on that. Don't spend all your time coming up with a perfect project. Just do the thing. <laughs> For my iOS journey, I talked to people already working with the iOS, iOS development, and I got recommended the program 100 Days of Swift UI by Paul Hudson. This is a great source if anyone here wants to learn iOS development. Uh, the reasons for my choice here, choosing this, uh, was that it was free. It ha and all I needed to start was a Mac with Xcode ins installed. I did not have to sign up to any extra site. I didn't even have to create a login. Uh, the everything is hosted on his own page. Like You can go into YouTube, but you can also just watch it there. Meaning you don't get to see other content or video ads all the time. Uh, it also has you starting making apps really quickly, which was what I wanted, but it also takes you through the beginning, like how do you get started? How do you write integers in Swift? Um, but the main point maybe for me was it had a time frame, not just the here are the different steps, but here are the 100 days. You just have to show up 100 times and the rest will just figure itself out, <laughs> kind of. Uh, so step one and two should ideally be short and sweet. Uh, both could be completed in an afternoon because it's not that serious. Step one and two are guidelines. They're here to help you with the execution of the most important thing, the doing the thing. Step three, do the thing. This is the central part and the most important part. So probably it's probably going to feel strange that this is also the shortest step in the doc. Uh, because there's not that much to it. Once you've identified what you want to do and you've found a resource to use, 
now all that's left to do is taking action. Um, and how do we take action? <laughs> like this is, just do it. You just sit down and you do it. Uh, the first, so like, there's one thing that could be really helpful at this stage, and that is deciding on a time frame. That could be the 100 days, but it could also be like when during the day should you be doing this. Uh, I was lucky here because my program gave me the time frame, 100 days. Uh, but if you ask me if I completed the program in 100 days, uh, no, no, I did not. I, um, well, I used the time frame like for a, like a guidance of how far I had gotten. So I knew, okay, I have now spent three weeks learning. That means that there is nine, no, 89, math's not my, <laughs> we're not mathing here. I <laughs> I could figure out how far I had progressed based on which day I was on, and that was the most important part. <laughs> so I just knew I had to show up 100 times in order to complete the program, and I would learn a lot about iOS. Uh, but I spaced those 100 times over the course of 12 to 14 months. And that's because life happens, and that's okay. And you just have to keep showing up when you can. Uh, you don't fail if you stop learning for a while. You only fail when you stop, like completely stop. So if you stop today and you don't pick it up until you d like the day you die, then yeah, you kind of failed. <laughs> but you still like have all this opportunity to succeed. Uh, so then, doing the thing. What you need to do is show up. And then you show up again, and again, and again, and again, and you get the point. This is the step where you utilize the effectiveness of just showing up consistently. If you work on something for 15 minutes every day for a month, you'll undoubtedly get further than spending two hours one time. Plus, things will stick better in your brain, I think. <sighs> I will drink some water now. <sighs> so, when I started doing the thing, learning iOS development, I spent around 15 to 60 minutes every evening. And suddenly, I had made two apps in three weeks. And three weeks after that again, I had made seven apps. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the 100-day program, I had made 13 different apps. <laughs> uh, and also been through several technique projects uh, focusing on themes like animation, accessibility, navigation, and data, to name a few. But as you can see here, like it's nothing fancy. This is not, um, this is not doing anything perfectly, nor to production levels. And it doesn't have to be, because like I said, like it's, it's not that serious. We're trying to do the thing and just learn, do it. And perfection is kind of like, I don't know, the murderer of doing sometimes. Uh, but of course, like disclaimer, most of these apps were done under the guidance of the program I was doing. But the more I learned from the program and the more apps I made, the more I could think up solutions myself. I started knowing where to look for answers. I started getting a feeling of what was possible and how to start working on an app idea from scratch. It weirdly felt like magic getting to this place, uh, but it was just the effectiveness of showing up consistently. So step three is definitely where most time should be spent. This is the part where the magic happens, even if the magic is just <coughs> consistency. But we need to know how things are going to. So let's go through the final step. Step four is all about assessing how the doing went. I'd like to add right away that like, this step can come in the middle of the doing the thing, of any of the other steps. It's not necessarily the last step, but it is an important one. Going over how it went, could have, what could have been better and what was already great, helped me adjust how I was approaching learning iOS development. An example, as I was getting further into the program, I started pushing the sessions later and later in the evening, which resulted in me not remembering much the following day. Uh, so I decided to go back, redo a bunch of days, and be stricter with doing a session after dinner instead of right before bed. And that magically just helped. Uh, assessing how, thing, how it's going can also be a great help in deciding that you don't like what you set out to do. And quitting is also valid. Just because only doing the thing is doing the thing doesn't mean that you should be doing something you don't enjoy. Sometimes doing the thing shows us that we're not actually that into it. It could have been a fun exercise, but that was it. Or maybe a great hobby to enjoy in your spare time sometimes. 
and that's okay. I, as you might have gathered, decided that uh, iOS development was a fun exercise that I was interested in exploring even more. Some of the reasons for this was I enjoyed how easy it was to test several accessibility features on device without the need for extra software. I loved how quickly an idea could go from a sketch to an app, and I really loved being able to have what I worked on on my phone at all times, which also resulted in a cool party trick. Uh, Want to see what I just worked on? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I wanted to pursue iOS development, uh, which had me do the more difficult thing than actually doing the thing. I had to believe in myself and what I had learned enough to dare apply for a job as an iOS developer. But that is a story for another day, including how I used this exact same formula to learn Figma just to make the coolest CV to ensure I was noticed in the application pile. <laughs> and I was. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can give me a plus. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, pretty much, there you have it. Uh, a pretty simple step guide to how to do the thing. Summarizing it up, like get clear on what you want to do. Talk to people who are already doing what you want to do. And get their tips and tricks. Set a time frame and show up consistently. Remember that doing the thing is more important than all the other steps. But all the other steps can simplify the process for you. Don't forget to assess and don't be scared to adjust your process or change the thing you've been doing. Like they say in hiking in Norway, der ingen skam oss nu. <laughs> like there is no shame in turning back, ever. Uh, so yeah, lessons learned. There is no magic or hocus pocus to learning something new. It just takes time and showing up consistently, like you just have to do the work. Who would have not thought? Remember that the goals are there to help guide us. Doing the thing itself is the goal. If you want to pursue or try something, don't stand in your own way. Don't let go of a great opportunity because you're scared you might get rejected. Just remember that companies hire people to do this, so don't do it for them for free. Uh, and sometimes things take longer than anticipated, and that does not a failure make. The timeline is more like a guideline, like any consultancy would know, uh, especially when we are exploring and learning. And in hindsight, I realize that uh, I probably would not have needed to spend more than 100 days learning SwiftUI to get where I am today. But I did need the boost in confidence completing the program gave me. And now we're almost done. <sighs> this went quicker than I thought, so that's good. Do you like finish this up? Like I just want to take a, a second to go like this talk doesn't, didn't go into anything technical per se, because as cheesy as it sounds, my goal was to make a talk that I myself would have needed two years ago. I hope it can encourage at least one person to get started doing the thing they've been thinking of doing, uh, or to seize the inspiration you gained from Autocon today and try the cool thing you heard about in a talk, because I believe in you. Uh, and finally, like I have heard there are more women iOS developers, uh, but I have yet to meet anyone in person. So if you are an iOS developer or if you want to become an iOS developer, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you all for listening. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much.